At standard pressure, water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees. As you can see in this drawing, the molecules form bonds, which creates a structure for the solid to remain fixed in volume and shape, therefore rigid. However, with the liquid state, the molecules are more freely to row, therefore the volume is fixed, but the shape is not. With the gas, the molecules are so dispersed that it doesn't really have a shape and a really minuscule volume. However, water doesn't always freeze when it's supposed to. When the conditions are met, you can leave a bottle of pure water in the fridge for hours and it won't solidify into ice until you make contact with impurities. This is because liquids are subject to a unique state known as supercool. When the liquid is below its freezing point, but it doesn't solidify. However, the state of supercooling doesn't apply with impure water. Temperature isn't the only criteria for water to react in the supercooling state. There's a specific process with how the molecules are rearranged. Christian will introduce this process. The common misconception is that temperature is the only thing that dictates a liquid going through a phase change to a solid. But actually, molecular structure has a big role in this too. Because normally, if you put a water bottle and you freeze it, what you are essentially doing is that you are putting the molecules in a low enough temperature setting where they, it allows them to form structures and bond together and form crystallization in there. And these sites where you first start seeing crystallization are called nucleation sites. And these sites don't happen on their own. You have to either have imperfections in your water, which is the most, mostly the case with our drinking water, or there has to be a physical disturbance. So in our case, what we did is that we had water that didn't have any imperfections or minerals. Therefore, it was able to withstand temperature below zero degrees Celsius and still not freeze. So as you can see in our video later on, our demonstration, we actually had to cause a physical disturbance to the water bottle by smashing against the table, and that caused a nucleation site on the top. And this essentially allowed the imperfection to happen and the nucleation site to form. And thus, these molecules arrange themselves and then in crystallization structures, which then spread throughout the other molecules and eventually froze the whole water bottle itself. So we have to carefully remove the purified water from the freezer and if I apply sufficient force to it, we should see crystallization. <gasps> oh my god! It worked! Yes! <laughs> so we just saw with Seth smash a water bottle against the table. And what he essentially did is, as I talked before, he created a nucleation site at the top. And as you know, nucleation sites don't happen on their own. So the physical disturbance in this scenario was the smashing of the water bottle. And it should be important to note that we only left the water bottle in there for two hours. Because although the molecules are moving at a slow velocity, they are still moving. So over time, if you leave it longer than two hours, it will eventually freeze like any other water. But since this is purified water, there was, there was a need to have an external disturbance to happen to the water bottle. Another thing is that disturbances can happen in any form. Literally, we had to take a lot of trials and to actually get it to work. For example, if you leave the water bottle on the door, if you simply open the door, that's enough to trigger a nucleation site and just ruin the whole take itself. Another thing to note is that you need gradual cooling to happen. So if you put the water bottle in the fridge, you can't check it every 10 minutes or even every hour. You have to let it gradually cool and then it will eventually get to this super cool condition. It should be noted also that the water bottle we used, we had to empty a portion of the purified water because as you know, water expands as it forms in ice. So, you're 
You're probably wondering what some real-world applications of supercooling are. Well, you can find answers in all sorts of situations. For example, some clouds can reach temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius, therefore causing supercooled water vapor inside the cloud. And when that vapor comes into contact with something like a plane, the interaction with the plane causes nucleation sites all along, all along that object, similar to how we created nucleation sites by banging the water bottle against a table. This is a phenomenon known as icing. Icing allows for the rigidity and weight of the ice crystals that are now formed on the plane to affect its aerodynamic properties, increasing drag force and reducing lift. In the worst cases, this um, causes pilots to lose control of the plane entirely. There are also living examples of supercooling in species such as fish and plants that must survive at very low temperatures. They achieve supercooling in their bodily fluids by releasing proteins that bind to nucleation sites and stop them from forming. it on the counter, you should see some crystals. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Super cold water, take two. Open the freezer door very slowly. Here we have water. We're gonna take it out very carefully. Then, Sounds nice in it too.